Hello everyone. Today I will be discussing the emerging and evolving technology of deepfakes. In Deborah G. Johnson's Computer Ethics, the first chapter discusses a virtual rape case in which the avatars of the players of an online website are hacked and forced to pose and commit sexual actions. Johnson explores why it is so upsetting to have an avatar controlled this way, comparing it to having one's favorite sports jersey burned. Johnson, 2009. The act of losing control, agency, is upsetting on its own. But now, doctored videos and audio are the next iteration, the next evolution of this abuse. Videos of someone being raped can be completely doctored, and some similar issues from Johnson's analysis will return here, such as questions pertaining to what crime was committed and by who. It's not just an avatar at play anymore, but our very own image and likeness, our identity, and how others see us when deepfakes are at issue. What are deepfakes? Besides simply saying it is a sophisticated technology that can create fake news or media, it is difficult to say, as it is still developing and branching off in, into different aspects of our senses. For now, examples of their use may help to define it. Recently, there is controversy over Twitch streamers' faces being used over explicit content, Cole 2023, or a dark humor YouTube video of football commentators covering the bombing of Hiroshima. Less harmful, we have seen memes of President Biden and former President Trump and Obama playing video games together and arguing in vulgar fashion. Two years ago, a video of Tom Cruise golfing went viral, except it wasn't him at all. Social media platforms must act by Dan ranking or labeling these posts to keep them from spreading if it is deemed harmful to the community. The platforms who provide the tooling and cloud computing for these deepfakes, such as Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, also have a moral obligation to stop deepfakes from promoting a culture of factual relativism. Jai Man 2020. Perhaps one day, even our own vision will not be a given base reality, Slater 2020. If technology is incorporated into our senses, like VR or AR, virtual augmented, then we could be susceptible to witnessing things that aren't happening or not noticing things that are happening. Someone in the future could go to your social media page, find recordings of someone you care about, and use that to create a fake but super realistic video of them being held hostage for ransom. The news is one way many keep up with current events and stay educated. Bots have already swarmed social media sites to spread misinformation during political campaigns, and deepfakes will be an extension of this. Most recently, images circulated on Twitter of former President Trump being tackled by the NYPD. So as you can see here, you have an image of a video game called Near Automata. If you don't get the reference, it's a story about these androids whose task, whose mission, is to defend humanity from invading aliens. Spoiler alert. A key turning point in the story, a key plot issue, is that the humans we're defending on the moon turn out not to be alive at all, and that humanity is long extinct. And so the sole reason for these androids' existence has been null and void all along. And this is just one of many examples in your automata of the perception of what the character is, is completely destroyed. And why I bring this up is because deepfakes have the ability to, to distort one's reality, and our own perceptions contribute to our own self-image. So far, a lot of what has been said has been negative. What good is caused by deepfake technology? What good can be caused by something that isn't real? Can deception ever be greater good? If knowing the truth would ever cause someone we love to hurt, would it be better to lie? Of course, some may believe it is always best to tell the truth no matter what, but is it possible that the truth is worse than the lie in some situations? Deepfake deception was used for a greater good in the most recent 2022 season of America's Got Talent. One group, Metaphysic, competed by using AI technology to create deepfakes of the judges singing classical songs. A professional singer was brought onto the stage for each song, and an AI representation of the judge appeared on a screen above with mouth movements mimicking the singing. Did the audience enjoy the act? Definitely. The judges enjoy themselves, sing themselves even more. Metaphysic made the grand finals of the competition, proving that deepfakes have undergone leaps of improvement and have no difficulty in capturing the audience's attention. The underlying point is that no one was harmed. Even the targets of the deepfake were affected in a positive way. Deepfake technology is not just an artifact or piece of equipment, it is an extension of the will of humans. Is it used for copying the voice of someone's deceased grandmother onto an Amazon Alexa to give solace to a grandchild, reading bedtime stories? Deepfake technology is creating a whole host of application uses that were once science fiction. This distortion of reality that we talked about earlier 
is a byproduct of defect use. Is distorting reality a bad thing? It depends on who is doing the distortion and who is affected. If a tyrannical government is oppressing its citizens and protesters fight against it, deepfakes can be used to hide their identity. Joshi 2022. On the flip side, deepfakes can also be used to appropriate or steal identities. Distorting reality could cause many errors, be that in taking medication, maintaining dangerous machinery, or teaching history. It could be helpful to create or imagine settings that were not witnessed by us. Such, such as the American Revolution. But at the same time, it could be used to make up stories in history that never happened or portray long dead heroes saying or doing things they never did. So deepfakes can dig up and reinterpret the past for better or worse. Unless targeted and controlled for a specific use and intention, such as showing George Washington make a speech or doing research with a personal AI assistant, the distortion creates disorder, which wreaks harm on whoever observes the perceptions created by it. Harm is never good unless the entity receiving the harm is bad, such as a, such as a tyrannical government or a stalker. Confusing these entities with defects is beneficial for the autonomy and safety of those whom a totalitarian or stalker would target. Generally, the fakeness of defects is not a good thing, so is anything about defects actually real? The ability to create something almost indistinguishable from its original also raises more teleological questions. Applying the analogy of the ship of Theseus, if something is slowly replaced, bit by bit, by something new, if one part of it is still original, is it still original? What does it mean to be, quote, original, besides having existed first? At what point does replacing or updating something, especially with deepfakes, cause it to no longer be itself? It's like if I broke into your home, stole everything you had, and replaced everything you had with duplicates. Similar scenarios were raised by Johnson in Computer Ethics, discussing how the reproducibility and exfiltration of data could be undetected. Deepfakes possess this sinister characteristic in that they can be smuggled, smuggled in as counterfeit for whatever object you think of, albeit limited to a computer screen. For now. Much of these... Much of this issue has to do with how we frame deepfake technology. Even the name deepfake presumes we are faking something or tricking a viewer. It's hard to say anything good about something fake. How else could it be used besides tricking, lying, deceiving, distorting, confusing? It sounds like the devil's new toy. Perhaps it could be seen as an instrument for creativity. It could be used to create whole super real worlds, making CGI look like child's play. But again, it can't be helped to relapse into ideas about pure entertainment and further isolation. So it's not so much that deepfakes are just fake or bad, but that as an instrument for limitless creative possibility, we don't know what to do with it yet besides make a deepfake of Carrie Fisher on The Last Jedi. In a sense, technology has not only outpaced our ability to regulate and legislate for it, it has also outpaced our very ideas and conceptions of how it can be used. The problem with deepfakes becomes more of an issue when combined with politics. Politics have evolved into a war. Ruthless individuals go to the lengths of committing crimes to get themselves or their candidate of choice elected to a position of power. Looking for a way to reduce your opponent's chance of winning the election? Create a deepfake of them that attacks their qualities. It could be anything. Fake audio, fake statements, fake appearances, fake personalities. Any media your opponent has that strengthens their campaign. Nancy Pelosi fell victim to deepfakes when an individual created a video of her with the speech slowed down, making her seem drunk. Brown 2020. Instead of making Pelosi outright say something that would harm her status, this individual associated both alcoholism and unprofessionalism to Pelosi's character. This is equivalent to gossip in high school, spreading rumors about someone to make them make people not like them. This harm caused by defects not only affects the individual, but more so democracy. There is high importance to elect the most qualified, trustworthy candidates to positions of power. Defects may cause a trustworthy candidate to lose votes and enable the least democratic and most authoritarian leaders to thrive. Jai Man 2020. Politics have evolved to the point where arguments may no longer be based on how the candidate will better society. A lot of the arguments now attack the opposition by explaining why the opponent is bad for society. Deepfakes empower this type of argument even more by giving candidates or followers power to attack the opposition status. There is no longer, there is no problem if candidates use the mistakes or bad qualities of opponents to advance their own campaign. However, deepfakes do not fall under the same category because they are fake, as discussed earlier. A politician can use a video of their opponent saying something inappropriate as long as it actually happened. This is fair competition and can enhance a justifiable argument. However, they should not be able to use a deepfake video of the opponent stating an inappropriate phrase as the basis of an argument. 
How can a society place their trust in a leader that won their position due to fake videos? Will they now use fake videos to spread to the public even more? Candidates can cheat their way to the top using deep fakes, and all of a sudden, a corrupt leader is no longer making decisions for them themselves, but the country as a whole. One of the simplest forms of a deepfake is taking audio slices and, and combining them together to make an individual say something they never did. In 1983, this occurred when audio slices from Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan were taken and made to sound like the two wanted to fight each other, potentially hurting their campaigns, D DHS 2020. These individuals had previously been known to have a strong relationship developing policy for the alliance during Cold War times. The audio alone would most likely not be enough to win an audience over today, but back then the deepfake might have sounded more believable. A knowledgeable audience will pick up on changes in tone to identify the audio as fake. The power of audio slicing today is much greater due to advances in technology being able to alter tone and pitch. The fact that a deepfake occurred in politics 40 years ago and more advanced forms of deepfakes are being used now should be frightening. Take the Pelosi example used earlier. This is a combination of audio and the speed of the video being altered. The audio would need to be taken from the original video and edited so s audiences will not simply assume that it is in slow motion. Then the speed of the video needs to be slowed down and the audio placed back over the edited video. All of this just to make Pelosi look like an alcoholic on the job. Other forms of deepfakes involve actually changing the words of an individual or taking words from multiple sor sources and combining them together. An entire speech could be made by taking words from a politician's many videos and changing the tone to make them fit into a logical sentence. Worse yet, a deepfake could be distributed to another country that contained a video of highly ranked officials discussing a surprise attack. This could not only damage country relations, but even spur violence. The surging power of deepfakes needs to be noticed before technology enhances it more. A fear needs to be instilled in society of what deepfakes could become. Every new advancement is similar to a groundbreaking new technology in that it is almost too shocking to believe. A person who has never seen a movie will think that the first one they do see is real. Seeing is believing, perception is reality. The same concept applies to deepfakes. At some point, a deepfake will be so technologically advanced and similar to a real video that a vast majority of the public will in fact find it real. This point is what the technology world should fear. A new type of cyberbullying that can be devastating for victims has developed as a result of the rise of deepfake technology. Not only is it possible for someone to fabricate a fake image or a video of a person engaging in inappropriate or humiliating behavior, the sheer difficulty in telling the difference between what's real and what's not can significantly harm a victim's relationships, reputation, and mental and emotional health. Deepfakes have been used to harass and bully people on, on the internet for as long as the technology has been around. 96% of deepfakes are pornographic, with, with, with 134 million views exclusively objectifying women through the means of AI. Shyman 2020. The rising number of pornographic deepfakes is a troubling trend that dehumanizes women, supports harmful gender stereotypes, and contributes to the normalization of sexual violence. Policymakers need to work on creating clear legal frameworks that address the production, distribution, identification, and intention of deepfakes. Deepfake cyberbullying is a growing issue that all parties involved must work together to solve. We can create effective policies that protect individuals from the harm caused by deepfake cyberbullying, educate the public, and develop new technologies together, but it will require a complete overhaul of our modus operandi when it comes to what we as a society and as individuals value and the underlying principles we have followed, some of which are only now being exposed by deepfake technology. Deepfake technology is another iteration of the extension of human will, as aforementioned. Some wills are good, some are bad. It is up to us to make sure that this powerful technology doesn't fall into the wrong hands. But when all else fails, it's also understandable to turn off the phone, turn off the TV, sit outside, maybe with someone you know, and just stop thinking about it for a moment. Real or not, it may take a martyr's dedication to withstand the condemnation of society, family, and friends, to stay true to one's own original intentions, to not forget who they always were, no matter what man or machine may say or think.